word that God wants me to lift today, and we thank you again for your presence on this rainy day. Give God thanks again for the blessings that he has already given to us. Many of us have lost count because they are too numerous for us to add. Let me share with you um, two portions of scripture. Uh, the first is 1 Kings chapter 12. 1 Kings chapter 12. If you permit me to kind of read Sit up a, a lot of scripture today. Starting at verse 1, then I'll ask you to turn to Proverbs 27. So 1 Kings chapter 12, then we'll turn to Proverbs 27, verse 17. Jackson preached. Uh, he hooped. He squalled. And he got us all excited, me included. <laughs> so if y'all think I'm going to squall and holler, you better buy the tape from 8 o'clock worship experience. First Kings chapter 12, uh, the New Living Translation, follow me, it, it, will, it will line up after a while. Verse 1, Rehoboam went to Shisham, where all of Israel had gathered to make him king, and Jeroboam, son of Nebuchadnezzar, heard of this, he returned from Egypt, for he had fled to Egypt to escape from King Solomon. The leaders of Israel summons him, and Jeroboam and the whole assembly of Israel went to speak with Rehoboam. Your father was a hard master, they said, lighten the harsh labor demands and heavy taxes that your father imposed on us. Then, when, then we will be your loyal subjects. Rehoboam replied, give me three days to think this over. Then come back for my answer. So the people went away. Then King Rehoboam discussed the matter with the older men who had counseled his father, Solomon. What is your advice? He asked, how should I answer these people? The older counselors replied, if you are willing to be a servant to these people today and give them a favorable answer, they will always be loyal subjects. But Rehoboam rejected the advice of the older men and instead asked the opinion of the young men who he had grown up with and were not his now his advisors. What is your advice, he asked them. How should I answer these people who want me to lighten the burdens imposed by my father? The young men replied, this is what you should tell those complainers who want a lighter burden. My little finger is thicker than my father's waist. Yes, my father laid heavy burdens on you, but I'm going to make them even heavier. My father beat you with whips, but I will beat you with scorpions. And three days later, Jeroboam and all the people returned to hear Rehoboam's decision, just as the king had ordered. But Rehoboam spoke harshly to the people, for he rejected the advice of the older counselors and followed the counsel of his younger advisors. He told the people, my father laid heavy burdens on you, but I'm going to make them even heavier. My father beat you with whips, but I will beat you with scorpions. 
Proverbs 27, verse 17 on the screen. Can you read it with me? Proverbs 27, 17. It says, As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. I want to share for a brief moment today. I look at your neighbor and say, Tell them, I need you to make me better. And take your seat. The strength or weakness is of friendship. The challenges that God has thrust upon us as anthropomorphic morphic beings. This attitude of having to share the blessings and burdens of this world. God places people in our lives who can make life better for us. I hope you pray with us today that God is concerned about who we spend our time with. And God is concerned that we arrive at his chosen destination for our lives. It is not God's plan for us to be people of mediocre intent. God desires for us to be like him, to be the one who is seen, the one who makes a difference, the one who makes an impact on life. I, 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 I studied this all week, and, and, and I got more involved in the history of it than I did in trying to prepare a sermon because the history of this text is, is so strong. Rehoboam is the grandson of King David, the son of Solomon. And Solomon was known to be the wisest man other than Jesus on earth. Solomon had entered into his kingship strong and committed to God. His father David left the responsibility to him to build the house of God, the temple. And Solomon was eager to obey God, but after a while, you can read in Ecclesiastes, you can read in some of his writings how there was a shift in Solomon's life. At the end of Solomon's life, he left wisdom because he tried to figure everything out by himself. Y'all pray with me. And Solomon was one who was gifted. Solomon built many buildings. Came to a point in Solomon's life that he was led astray by his own lust. He had 700 wives and 300 cuckabines, girlfriends, booze, sidekicks, 700 wives and 300 booze, girlfriends. And Solomon had, had since taken his eyes off of God. Church, I need y'all to help me today taking his eyes off of God and started to please all of these women. And Solomon gets to a point where in order for him to marry the queen of a country, he would have to give in to many of their customs. And thus giving into their customs, Solomon allowed idol worshipers into the temple that he had once erected for Yahweh. Solomon allowed the nation of Israel to start to worship false gods just to please the women in his life. They were such an abundance of women that Solomon lost his mind. No pun intended. Solomon lost his mind because he allowed all of these different influences to not only come into the temple of God, the building, but also 
into his own mind. Solomon fell prey to all the things he accepted in life just to find pleasure in the people he was associated with. Solomon ruined Israel. Israel falls prey to the wrath of God. And God said, because you did not take heed to the voice of your father, because you have abandoned my statute, I have to bring Israel to a division. And Israel is now, and if you read Ecclesiastes, you can read some of Solomon's mental struggle. Solomon goes through a lot in writing Ecclesiastes. He goes through a lot of, of, of psychological damage and finding himself struggling just to understand God. Solomon now turns his rule over to his son, Rehoboam, and Rehoboam comes into leadership much as his father ended his tenure. He comes in with a wrath because Solomon Solomon was mean in the latter, older days of his life. Became cruel, became a taskmaster. He no longer loved the people God gave him rule over. He treated them as puppets, as slaves, and did not honor or respect them to the point that now his son comes in with the same mentality and he says, if you thought my daddy was a problem, I am the third generation, and I will cause you some pain you have never seen before. Here it is. Now, we find that Solomon left a bad legacy for his son. It's not how you always start, but you got to pick up momentum. So the one that you pass the baton to is not hindered by your lackadaisical end. Man, y'all help me, y'all help me. To the point now that Rehoboam finds himself having to seek counsel because, because the people want some relief. They said, listen, we're working too hard and we're getting so little. We're paying taxes and yet we get so little. The rich are getting richer and the middle class is being phased out and the poor gets poor and we need someone to step in. And, and rather than, than, than praying and rather than listening to those with experience, because Rehoboam goes to the elders, he goes to the older counselors, those who were with his father Solomon. He goes to them and he asks them what they thought. And they said to him, you ought to be nice. You ought not to be as harsh. You ought not be as cruel as your father was in the latter years of his life. Let them see God in your life and the way you treat them in a way you embrace them in a way in which you give them some kind of relief. Let God be seen by the way you treat them. Y'all missing y'all. Let God be seen by the way you treat them. The word of God says in, in 1 Kings, it says uh, that, that, that Rehoboam did not take the advice of those who've been through some hell already. Y'all can be with it. He, he did not take the advice of, of those who had been through some battles themselves because now they were old, antiquated. But, but let me share this with the young folk. We might be old and antiquated, but we've been through enough to tell you what you should try to do. Uh-oh. I'm not suggesting that we all have been right. I'm, I'm the first one to, to confess that I haven't done everything right. I haven't said everything that was correct. Uh, but, but hopefully I've done enough. And I've been through enough that you can hear and receive my testimony. That I once was down, but now the Lord has lifted me. I was blind, but now I see. that, that there, is a, there is an experience that you cannot get away from. There, there are some people here who have gone through some stuff, and if you would just listen, your life would be a little bit easier. Oh, oh, okay, young folk, I'm, I'm, I'll lose you a little bit. I know that, that, that we've done some things that not always have been right, but, but we have enough experience 
to tell you the rights and the wrongs. But here it is. L listen, what, what Rare Boom does is he leaves the elder councils. He goes to the Word of God says, the young counselors. It says, those he grew up with. I mean, y'all gotta get this. He goes to the people who had the same experiences that he has, who really can't give him advice because they played on the same playground. Y all, y all, y all. <laughs> they had the same similar experiences to the point now that, that they can't help each other. And parenthetically here, I want to ask you, how many folk do we have in our lives that just can't help us? How many people are you carrying with you, but they can't help you? Lord, y'all, y'all just. How, how many folk do you allow in the sanctuary of your mind who dream you but can't not make a deposit? I mean, y'all, I, I, I remember knowing God's intent for humanity is that we sharpen each other. Iron sharpens iron. It is that we associate with people in different levels of life that we know can make us better. You can't just have around you yes people. People who only tell you what you want to hear in order to stay in friendship with you. I need a friend who is willing to tell me the ugly truth. That Mariner, you're on the wrong path. Even though I love you, you're on the wrong path. We need some people in our life that will challenge us, connect with us on this journey of life. We need each other. Type your neighbors, we need each other. But I need you to make me better. Man, y'all might have quiet. No, 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 y'all might have quiet. Say, I need you to make me better. See, the person you just told may not be a friend of yours. You may not even know them, but they are standing in the gap for someone you play with, you work with, or you walk with. You must let them know, I need for you to make me better. I don't need you to make me do bad because I can do bad. It's a song. Back in the 70s, some of y'all would have been born back then. A song in the 70s by Bill Withers. Bill Withers would sing the song, he would say, it was called Lean On Me. Y'all know I want to sing it, don't you? It says, sometimes in our lives, we all have pain. We all have sorrow. But if we are wise, we know that there's always tomorrow. Lean on me when you are not strong. See, see, Bill is talking about real divine friendship. Lean on me when you're not strong, and I'll, I'll be your friend. I'll help you. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, baby boomers. I'll help you carry on, for it won't be long till I'm going to need somebody to lean on. It says, please swallow your pride. If I have faith you need to borrow, for no one can feel those of your needs of your heart that you won't let show. You just call on me, brother. When you need a hand, when we all need somebody to lean on. Now, the question is, 
Who are you trusting to lean on? I, I'm, give, me, give me two more Mary, in a minute. Who are you trusting to lean on? For you got to make sure they're able to help you grow. Because iron sharpens iron. And what Rehoboam does is that he goes to his friends whom he has association with, but they can't help his kingdom. Matter of fact, under his kingdom, Israel is split. They had 12 tribes. He loses 10 of them and holds on to two. Why is it that God gave you 12, you lost 10? Could it be you didn't have enough people around you to help you carry the weight? Y'all with me? This, this word is important because it lets us know. I heard Van Moody say this. Van Moody said this. He's coming to us in July. He said, there are, there are two people in your life. One is a pallbearer and the other is an almond bearer. I need for you to examine your life and your friendship. Could it be the reason you not going far is because you got a lot of dead weight around you that you are unwilling to get up, give up in order to do what God wants you to do. I know this is a tough message, but I'm going to preach it anyhow. I, 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 who are you with? I, are you an almond bearer? A person who helps me grow? A person who helps me when I'm weak? A person who celebrates my strength? A person who confronts me when I'm down? A person who prays for me? A person who believes in me even though I'm down in the gutter at this moment, but yet they are my friend because they're with me through sick and thin. They are my almond bearers. They hold my arms up when my arms get heavy. They prop me up when I get weak. They encourage me when I am depressed. They let me know the joy of the Lord is still my strength. They let me know that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. They keep pushing me and pushing me and pushing me and pushing me to my greatness. I dare you to say, neighbor, are you my almond bearer or my paw bearer? Are you carrying me to an early grave? Are you carrying me to a place that has no life? Are we walking together to a place of solitude and not freedom? The word of God says two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the one who falls and has no one to help them get up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep each other warm. But how can one keep warm by themselves? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. But a court of three is not easily broken. You need some people on your divine journey who will help you achieve your greatness. Stop looking for people. Stop looking for them to always tell you what you want to hear. Sometimes what I don't want to hear is what I need to hear to put some fire under my feet to make me get out of this complacency, to make me try a little harder run a little faster, jump a little higher, shout a little longer. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but you need somebody who can help you. Somebody who can help you and take get wise counsel from. The word of God says, one can chase a thousand, but two can put 10,000 to flight. I wonder how many of you in this place know you got a one in your life. Somebody who can help you chase the demons away. Somebody who can help you fight for your marriage. Somebody who will help you fight for the man they call no good because they want the man you're about to get rid of. And if I'm miserable, I want you miserable. Sometimes you can't listen to your boo, your girlfriend. Find some senior person who's been through some hell but still on their feet. Find somebody who 
who's been through some stuff. Y'all, y'all, I know y'all, I know y'all ain't here today. I know y'all don't want to hear this today. Got to find somebody who can tell you the road is rough. The going gets tough. The hills are hard to climb. But I decided a long time ago, I ain't new. This Christ stuff ain't new. I've been around. I've seen, I've seen God move. I've seen God heal. I've seen God deliver. I've seen God give strength. I've seen God make a way out of no way. I've seen God open doors. I've seen God close doors. Man, you got to tell somebody, if it had not been for God on my side, I don't know where I would be, but I'm so glad I had somebody. Rare boom didn't have that person. Rare boom become hard and cold. And God divides Israel and leaves him with not 12, but two. Don't make God take the stuff away he wants to bless you with because you listen to wrong advice. Everybody doesn't have your best interest at heart. Some want to walk with you, but they don't want you to walk ahead of them. And as long as you down with them, as long as you're right there with them, they okay. But as soon as you say, I'm moving a little further, I'm climbing Jacob's ladder, and every round goes higher and higher, I'm moving on, they tell you, oh, you think you're too good now? Oh, you think you're better than I am now? Just tell them, no, I'm not better than you, but I'm better off without you. If you can't celebrate my blessing, the hell with you. If you don't understand that God is moving me into a new category of life and existence, forget you. If you can't celebrate the blessing that I just received and you are jealous, I don't need you in my life. Let the doorknob hit you with a good Lord split you. Man, I got to go home. How long, how long, church, will we allow people to drag us through the mud and drag us away from our divine destiny? How long? How long? How long? How long? Man, there's so much to this text. Rare boom messed up Israel because he didn't understand the iron sharpens iron. Now let me tell you what you need around you. You need some people who can connect with your greatness. You need some people who can give you comfort, a safe place, a trusting place, a place where whatever you tell them, it isn't going anywhere. A place where you tell them they can confront you on it. They're going to let you know, baby, I got your back, but let me tell you, you were wrong to cuss him out like that. You were wrong to hit her like that. No, I'm your friend, but you were still wrong. Then you got to need someone in your life to challenge you. I, I don't mean to irritate you. I was ministering to someone and the person told me uh, the reason that the girl and I broke up was because she was pushing me too hard. I want to go at my own pace. No, 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 you just lazy. You, you got a man or a woman trying to do you to get better and you get mad because all you want to do is just lay around the house and just eat the food up and watch cable. And you get mad because they want you to get a job, go to work, bring home some, some money. Ain't got to bring home all up, bring home some money. No, and I told him, no, you, you're lazy. And the reason you broke up with her was because you didn't want her to challenge your stinky stuff. Y'all didn't get that. I'm, I'm, I'm closing. 
But until you get some people in your life that will value you the way God values you, your destination and your destiny will take much longer to get to. Get some people in your life who won't let you sit on the stoop and complain about what has happened to you. But they'll say, baby, I know it happened to you. But God gave you a brand new morning. And word says, new mercies. New mercies every day. Find some people in your life that truly, truly will take wise counsel. But I want you to take wise counsel today. And I pray for our young people. I love you, young people. And I'm not saying that all of us who have reached a certain age, we know everything because we don't. But please take wise counsel. And don't just listen to those you run with and party with. They are doing the same thing you're doing. You've got to seek counsel for some people who have lived through some stuff. And let me see, who, who, who has lived through some stuff in this building? No, you got to stand on your feet. Who has lived through some stuff in this building? Who has lived through some stuff in this building? Pastor Rudis, so come on. Who has lived through some stuff in this building? No, no, come on. Who's been embarrassed but lived through it? Come on, come on. Oh, no, y'all. Who's been knocked down but got